Amateur Logic Shorts. Have you ever tried to download a Windows application from an unverified source, only to be stopped by the Microsoft Police? Or just weren't 100% positive that the file you were about to download or install was legit and didn't contain any nefarious payloads such as a virus or a Trojan horse? Wouldn't it be nice to have an isolated test environment or sandbox for testing? Well, you might not realize it, but if you're running one of the later versions of Windows 10, you already have a sandbox or test environment built right into Windows 10. The only thing you'll need is Windows Pro, Enterprise, or Education build 18305 or later. Windows 10 Home users, Windows Sandbox is currently not supported on Home Editions. We need to enable virtualization on our computer, and we do that by entering the BIOS setup. Next, double check to make sure that you've got the proper OS build for Windows 10, otherwise Windows Sandbox won't be available. We'll need to add the additional Windows feature for Windows 10 Sandbox. Once the Windows Sandbox additional feature has been added, go to Cortana or the search box and type in Windows Sandbox. If it's installed correctly, Windows Sandbox should appear at the top of your screen. Click it to launch Windows Sandbox. Okay, we've got our Windows Sandbox launched and you can see it uh, basically looks like Windows 10, but you can tell that it's only got a few uh, desktop icons in here. And the only thing you're going to see here uh, on your environment is a recycling bin and a shortcut to Microsoft Edge. And if I go into my folder here, even though it looks like I've got my normal, um, you know, access to drives and such, um, it's, it's basically just a Windows install. So if I go even to my downloads, which I know I have a lot of files in here on my actual real environment, you can see it's empty. And that's because this is the test environment. And keep in mind, everything we do in the test environment is going to disappear. And that includes any registry entries that uh, we're making. So it, it leaves no trace. So it's totally 100% disposable. Um, and that being said, I should point out that if you've got applications that require a reboot after you install, uh, bear in mind that's not going to work for you because the minute you reboot a Windows Sandbox environment, it's going to uh, delete everything. <laughs> so in that case, you're going to have to look for another uh, test environment to work with. And also, uh, as it stands right now, um, I was not able to get a USB uh, connection. So if you've got an application that requires USB, um, right now, uh, as it stands today, Windows does not support it. So if you've got an application that requires um, USB or, or another form of uh, connectivity, it may not work for you. So again, you may have to use a different test environment. So we're going to test out uh, going to a site and downloading a piece of software and installing it. And I'll, I'll demonstrate how uh, Windows Sandbox works. So we're just going to go to Carl's site, N4PY. And Carl's been doing this for, oh, quite a number of years. But uh, you'll notice here, um, there's there's no uh, padlock, so it's not a secure site. Carl's not running any certificates, but rest assured, uh, his downloads are safe. I'm only using this uh, to, um, to test out uh, Windows Sandbox. Uh, so we're going to pretend that we don't know anything about this particular site. Uh, we're going to download a demo and we're not sure about the file. Um, so we're going to go ahead and download it. And we're going to install it. And I'm just going to save it here. And once this is finished downloading, can see that the file is in my downloads directory so there it is there we're going to double click to launch it 
And of course, the Windows Police is warning me that it doesn't know what this file is because it didn't come from uh, a Microsoft, I guess, verified site. So um, if I click this, it's not going to do anything. If I click the More button, I can tell it to run anyway. In this case, I don't care because it's a test environment and it can't in any way harm my uh, standard install of Windows 10. So I'm going to tell it to run anyway. I'm going to run the setup and sign my life away and I'm just going to take the defaults and there okay so um, on Carl's site if we get this out of the way here Carl mentions that it requires a Microsoft runtime library so we're going to need that one as well so let's go ahead and click on the link and download the runtime library going to run this and sign my life away again. No, I don't want to send any information to Microsoft. Okay, now I can go ahead and close my browser and you can see uh, the installation has placed a shortcut on my desktop so I should be able to run this now and normally this software is available at a cost but uh, Carl allows you to test it for 10 days without a password so you don't put in a password in this case so I'm just gonna click OK and uh, click here and there it is voila so it's running um, so normally what I would do is I would test this out and decide whether or not it's something I want to keep um, and if that's the case then I would have to actually install it under my regular Windows 10 environment because the minute I do this um, it's giving me a warning here. Are you sure you want to close the Windows Sandbox? Once the Windows Sandbox is closed, all of its context, content will be deleted or discarded and permanently lost. So if I say OK, poof, it's gone. So in a nutshell, that's Windows 10 Sandbox and you can use it for all kinds of uh, testing for applications or if you've got software that you've been recommended to go and download but you're you're not 100 percent sure about it and if you don't know if it has maybe a trojan horse or a virus and you want to test it out first without jeopardizing your real windows 10 system you can use windows sandbox if you enjoy amateur logic shorts please click the like button be sure to click subscribe to be notified when new episodes become available and let your friends know about this video by clicking share.